G'day, I'm Tony Squires and welcome to the Edinburgh Military Tattoo, coming to you tonight from Aussie Stadium here in Sydney. That's right, behind me is a full-size replica of Edinburgh Castle. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Let's face it, we all love a parade and it doesn't get any bigger than this with a record 1,200 performers from all around the world. Military bands, the famous Scottish pipes and drums, singers, dancers, horses, history, it's all here. So pull up the drawbridge, sit back and enjoy the Edinburgh Military Tattoo, a salute to Australia. come for the first time ever in Australia, 300 strong, the massed pipes and drums.
Apart from the inevitable quilt inquiry, the most common question is why is it called the tattoo? Well, it comes from the expression Doden tap toe or turn off the taps. In the 17th and 18th centuries, drummers would march up and down the street to let innkeepers know it was time to turn off the beer taps and send the soldiers back to their quarters. Before Bart, by the centre, quick, march! Definitely going to be a drummer when I grow up. I'm joined by Anna Corrin. Do those pipes get the blood pumping? They do indeed. I am so excited to be here, and so is this crowd by the sounds of things. I, my toes will not stop tapping. They are. I can see them. I'll show them a bit later on. Also, we're going to see you a bit later on playing the bagpipes. Yeah, it's not pretty. I take my hat off to those people who do it. You need very big lungs. That applause isn't for Anna's playing, trust me. We will see that a little bit later on and much, much more. We'll see the mass pipes and drums return. Right now, though, we're going to see the New Zealand Army Band have a close look for their haka with something else. Quick! What?
showstopper very early in the evening. Those boys can jig. They certainly can. They're cheeky, those Kiwis. I love the haka. My favourite. I think that the All Blacks should do the haka as well, and they should also wear those uniforms and call that play Australia. They're good for the Wallabies. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, look, the Scottish Pipes and Drums, they'll be back a little bit later in the show. But coming up, the Queen's Colour Squadron of the Royal Air Force. And get ready to kick up your heels. You too, Tony. Don't you worry. The largest number of Highland dancers you will probably ever see. <laughs> Still to come, the mounted police, top secret drummers, the lone piper, and so much more. Stick around. In centuries past, Scottish warriors would dance victoriously over the shields and swords of their defeated enemies. Regarded as a sport, Highland dance was brought to Australia with the arrival of the first Scottish settlers. Testimony to the lasting ties between Scotland and Australia, 24 of Scotland's finest Highland dancers have joined forces with 150 of our very own. And for 16-year-old Australian Chantel Burke, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I think being a part of the tattoo in Australia is probably one of the best experiences that you could ever have as a Highland dancer. The audience for this Australian tattoo will be 27,000. And it's just really exciting. I've never danced for that many people in my life. The crowd makes it even more special because they're always cheering and clapping. I know they were all very excited about performing tonight. The Highland dancers a little later. I look forward to seeing them. They're with some great company, of course. One of the famous acts has been the Queen's Colour Squadron of the Royal Air Force. They do precision marching movements without a single word or spoken command. Try this with the kids at home. Second time in history the tattoo has been outside of Edinburgh. First time, of course, was in New Zealand in 2000.
his precision marching. It is indeed. It's exactly what we should see in the Pitt Street Mall at lunchtime. Might right come in handy. You know, those guys, in fact, have the world record for the most number of drill manoeuvres in 24 hours. 2,722,622. Just one more than my last dental visit. I'm impressed, Tony. Well, they also provide the Queen's Guard for all her residencies, such as Buckingham Palace, so they're certainly in safe hands. Uh, warming up backstage now, we talked about the Highland dancers. They're back there, they're ready to go with the tattoo Kale. I am so Scottish. He's on the money tonight. <laughs> My version of that Bush City Limits was very lame, I have I'm to sure tell you. I'm you kick up your heels that high, yes. Tony. Well, coming up, Australia and Britain's military vans with the largest contingent of vans to leave Britain's shores since World War II. days of old, soldiers were led into battle by pipers and the sound of their victory tunes. Today, the haunting drone of the great Highland bagpipe remains at the heart of the Scottish soldier. Now tell me, how did you get into piping? When I joined the army, one of my friends played the pipes, so uh, I took it up as a hobby when I was doing my training. And then from there, I applied to go to the Army Piping School. And what's it like to participate in the tattoo? The first night is always the best. Uh, when, you, when you come out of the castle in Edinburgh, and as soon as the gates open and the mass band goes through the drawbridge, 
and you see all the crowds and the lights flashing, you, you know, you just, your adrenaline's going and pumping, you know, so it's great, it's a great feeling. How hard are they to play? They're difficult, it's mostly technique. Okay. Do you want, do you want yeah, to... let's, let's, let's bring on the challenge. Right. <laughs> what you're trying to do is fill the bag. If you can do that, then that's a very good start. Okay, <laughs> all right. A bit harder. I think I'm about to faint. <laughs> you really nailed that wounded animal thing, didn't you? It sounded like something was dying, didn't it? Horrible. It was. How long does it take you to get good? Apparently seven years. Seven years. Yeah, but I think I'm going to leave it up to the professionals. But look, I tell you, we are about to hear something very beautiful, the sounds of the music from 700 performers. That's right, the combined military bands plus the pipes and drums with the Bonnie Lass of five. And now a moving tune written in honour of Hector the Hero, who fought in the 19th century Battle of Omdurman.
This tattoo is a celebration of the bond between Australia and Britain, between Australia and Scotland, but it's also about being simply Australian. <laughs> From the dream time, from the dusty red star plains. I am the ancient heart, the keeper of the flame. I stood upon the rocky shore, I watched the tall ships come. For 40,000 years I'd been the first Australia. I'm the daughter of a digger who sought the mother alone. The girl became a woman on the long and dusty road. I'm a child of the depression. I saw the good times come. I'm a pushy, I'm a battler, I am Australian. I'm the black soil of the plains The mountains and the valleys The droughts and flooding rains I am the rock, I am the sky The rivers when they run The spirit of this great land I am Australia the spectacular New South Wales Mounted Police. And later, the tattoo producer, Brigadier Melville Jamison, will take you behind the scenes. Stick around. We were uh, looking at three years of, of intense planning. Edinburgh Castle, majestic fortress, defender of Scotland. Sitting atop 70 million year old volcanic rock, Edinburgh Castle houses Scotland's crown jewels, the oldest regalia in Europe. It's also home to the amazing Edinburgh military tattoo. Can't really have a tattoo without Edinburgh Castle. It's uh, vital to the whole thing. When, when they set the smoke off in the mist and, and the cannons fire, it's, yeah, it just sets the whole thing off. And that's why Edinburgh Castle has been rebuilt from scratch right here in the grounds of Aussie Stadium in Sydney. And rest assured, no stone has been left unturned. We're working from reference photographs which have come from Scotland. We've been sort of pouring through those, picking up some of the details. Right down to the gemstones adorning the castle's shield. A team of 40 people have taken five months to painstakingly recreate Scotland's most famous landmark. It's 
stone for stone, it's the front of Edinburgh Castle. The dimensions, the size of it, the drawbridge. When the mass pipes and drums come down the thing, the hairs on the back of your neck will stand up. Not be a dry eye in the house, as they say. Hope you enjoyed the tattoo and the salute to Australia and that castle. How amazing is it? It is. One of the soldiers who actually lives in the Edinburgh Castle says our castle is a spitting image. Much more comfortable. South Sydney, of course, want to keep it there so they can stop the opponents from getting over the try line this season. <laughs> Not bad. Australians love the Edinburgh military tattoo, which is one of the reasons why they've brought it out here. But it's not just Australians who love it. A hundred million people watch it worldwide each year. That's quite an audience. My mother, of course, likes to see horse riding. There's that coming up now with the New South Wales Mounted Police. And this is the oldest continuous mounted police unit in the world.
salute tonight General Peter Cosgrove, Australia's Chief of the Defence Forces. How hard is it to get one to go in reverse? Very difficult, but my troop line never looked like that at Pony Camp. Top secret drums. Now, there's three words I never expected to hear in the same sentence, but that's our next act. They are, they're coming up. And what's interesting oh, is that so none of them are in the military. They're either doctors, lawyers, plumbers, teachers, and this is what they do in their spare time. Or drummers.
One of the modern favourites of the tattoo, Top Secret Drums, a band where everyone's the drummer. I just wish I had a little bit of that rhythm. Oh, don't sell yourself short. No, I don't. But I tell you who does. The military bands of Australia and Britain, they're coming up. The Scottish Pipes and Drums, they're also returning. And how could we forget the spectacular finale? For those of you out there that are wondering what's worn underneath the kilt, I can assure you there's nothing worn, it's all in perfect working order. Oh, Australia! We'll sing Matilda, we'll sing Matilda, you come a we'll sing Matilda with me. Welcome back to the Edinburgh Military Tattoo, a salute to Australia. The Kingsguard Norway is a group of young men and women who've just begun their compulsory military service. It's worth pointing out they've only been practicing this drill for eight weeks and this is their first public performance. Let's hope they get it right. The American Gerund M1 carbines they're carrying weigh more than five kilos. The bayonets are razor sharp. difficult to overstate just how Norwegian the name Matilda is. And now the military bands of Australia and Britain led by the Australian Army, Navy and Air Force. And please keep in mind that these men and women performing tonight are in active service and have served or are about to serve in places like Iraq.
hour, the Australians are joined by the bands of the British Armed Forces, the Royal Marines Band Scotland, the Band of the Scots Guards, and the Central Band of the Royal Air Force. Military bands in union now play, appropriately, the world in union.
Still to come, the 1200 strong tattoo cast return with some classic Australian tunes for the unforgettable finale. The grand spectacle of the tattoo is due in no small part to the brilliant display of uniforms. Steeped in tradition, every last detail has symbolic meaning. I think it's very, very important to carry forward the history of the regiments and we show off all the talents of these regiments. Of course, it wouldn't be the Edinburgh military tattoo without the kilt. In fact, the kilt owes its survival to the military after being adopted as an official uniform. It's been embellished with clan crests, regimental mottos and some interesting accessories. So why the three knives? Well, it's actually not three knives. One's actually a knife and the other one is actually a fork. A fork. <laughs> <laughs> so and people don't believe it's a knife and a fork until you actually show them. Another unusual addition to the military attire, leopard skins worn by the drummers. We believe the leopard skin was actually presented to the bands from Kings for probably services rendered, and it was decided that probably the bass drummers were the best people to wear. Of course, one of the most recognised British uniforms is the Scots Guards, with that towering bearskin hat. Now tell me, is that a real bearskin? Yes, it is a real bearskin. It's a Canadian black bear. And what's the reason for the height? Well, I believe, because um, they were taken from Napoleon's army, the Imperial Guard, they were copied from there. And I think it was in order to frighten the, the enemy, because they give the illusion that, you know, soldiers are sort of seven or eight feet high. I think everybody likes to say they've got a little bit of Scotland in them, and it's pride. You know, everybody's proud, proud of their regiment, proud of their tartan, proud to be Scottish. Well, it turns out there's so much I didn't know about the kilt. Colours, stripes, tartans, swords. <laughs> and knives, the duck. I love it when you say I duck. Know. <laughs> it's the guttural sound, isn't it? Two knives and a fork, it's a picnic set and one item of clothing. It is indeed. But let's return to the military bands with a Peter Allen classic. I recognise the Scots guards as the ones who stand outside Buckingham Palace. You know, the ones the tourists always try to make laugh. They don't just stand outside the palace, of course, they often play at the banquets there. And now, Waltzing Matilda, conducted by Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Pickett. Swagman camped by a billabong under the shade of a cool bar tree, and he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boil. Oh, come on, sing Matilda with me. Oh, sing Matilda. Oh, sing Matilda.
Now the beautiful voice of 19-year-old Allegra Giagu and the tattoo choir of Land of Hope and Glory. around for never before seen footage and we'll take you behind the scenes to see just how a tattoo is put together. Welcome back to the Edinburgh Military Tattoo. We hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. And now the entire 1,200 strong cast of the Edinburgh Military Tattoo return for the amazing finale. The massed pipes and drums from Scotland and Australia, the New Zealand Army Band, the Queen's Colour Squadron of the Royal Air Force, the Central Band of the RAF, massed Highland dancers, the King's Guard Norway. The New South Wales Mounted Police, Switzerland's Top Secret Drum Corps, and the bands of the Australian and British Armed Forces. The Tattoo Choir, directed by George Torbay, led by the Tattoo's Principal Director of Music, Major Andrew Chapman.
guard of honour tonight is the Australian Federation Guard. Seats, but stay with us because after the break, the spectacular finale continues with the unforgettable Lone Piper. Welcome back to this historic event. We're about to hear the traditional evening hymn, which pays tribute to those men and women who've lost their lives serving for their country and for those who are on active service. And then it's that enduring image of the Lone Piper high on the castle walls. But first, a song where we all sing at least once a year. It was penned by famous Scott Robert Burns, Old Lang Syne.
pay tribute to our military forces with the evening hymn. there a man with soul so dead who never to himself had said this is my own my native land land of brown heath and shaggy wood land of the mountain and the flood land of my sires what mortal hand can e'er untie the filial band that knits me to thy rugged strand. Scotland! Scotland, the day! Still to come, we farewell the Edinburgh military tattoo, a salute to Australia. Welcome back to the Edinburgh military tattoo, a salute to Australia. And believe it or not, this spectacular has come together with just three days of rehearsal. But it's been years in the making, and we salute all those involved from Australia and around the world.
much for joining us tonight. We hope you've enjoyed the evening as much as we have. It's been simply spectacular. And as soon as that history-making cast disappears inside the castle, it's time for us to disappear as well. Me, I'm running away to join a bagpipe band. Good night. Good night. Well, I might be joining the band, but you shouldn't go anywhere because it's not over yet. Coming up, we give you an exclusive look backstage, or back castle in this case. After the break, we look at some of the emotion behind the scenes. It's an amazing feeling, I can't, I can't explain it. Some never before seen footage of the tattoo. And you meet the man responsible for this great event. Well, I have to confess that uh, if people don't enjoy the show, it's entirely my fault. It's fantastic to be here, the weather's fantastic, the people are fantastic. It's a, generally a fantastic experience. Fantastic. Welcome back. The Edinburgh military tattoo, Salute to Australia, took more than three years of planning and endless hours of training by over 1,200 performers, many who have travelled from overseas using 1,484 flights, carrying over 15 tonnes of baggage and eating 48,800 meals. He also brought a stats person, obviously. All this under the direction of one man, Brigadier Melville Jamison, who's been the chief executive and producer of the tattoo since 1995. The first challenge is to get everyone here from all around the world. The second is, of course, it's a major logistic exercise, feeding, accommodating, transporting all that many people here in Sydney. But if you think that coordinating all those performers is a big responsibility, consider this. The Edinburgh military tattoo has been performed in Scotland for just over half a century and not once has a single performance been cancelled. We spoke to the Brigadier about the long-standing traditions of the tattoo. The Edinburgh military tattoo goes back a long way. There had been displays of pipes and drums and dancing on the esplanade of Edinburgh Castle between 47 and 49, along with the introduction of the great international festival number, which is so well known. The first took place in 1950, the Edinburgh Military Tattoo. So we're now on, I think, 55, or we've just had 55th Tattoo in, uh, uh, on the Esplanade of Edinburgh Castle. The actual word to, they say, it comes from the time when the British military were in the low countries of Europe and uh, the, uh, the call to go back to barracks from the inns on the streets 
uh, was uh, they would march through the town and say, do damn tap toe, turn off the beer taps, tap toe. The Dutch word became tattoo. Well, we've come some way. Edmund Tattoo's never uh, been exported abroad on this sort of scale that we're talking about here. And why is it so hard to perform the tattoo outside of Scotland? Because the tattoo just doesn't perform without a castle. We don't have one, so we had to build our very own. Let's go back six months to see just what an enormous task it is to recreate Edinburgh Castle. The real castle is built on a volcanic plug and uh, consequently the terrain is slightly different to the Aussie Stadium which is very flat. So it has to be put into a manageable shape and size. So its footprint is at least 67 metres by about 25 metres back and 25 metres up. Possibly one of the biggest sets that I've ever had a chance to work on. There will be um, various aspects of the castle that people will recognise readily and those are the features that we're dwelling on. These shields and, and details which will be installed above the archway, they are exact replicas of what you'd see in, um, in Edinburgh, as will the statues that uh, will sit in these niches, one of William Wallace and one of Robbie Burns. You'll notice how the ageing on the building, there is quite a distinct uh, darkening of the sandstone or whatever the stone might actually be, and uh, it gives a totally different look to the actual uh, background stone. This is what we're trying to achieve with a lot of our scenic effects. The only thing that's unfortunate is we can't actually dig a moat and put some water into the uh, Aussie Stadium behind our moat wall. Building the castle took several months. Well, we've been building now for nearly three months and um, considering that it took a few centuries to get this little baby together originally, um, it's still something of a work in progress. This is the uh, top section of the tower apartments, which is the highest part of our build. This goes some 16 or 18 metres up. There is one little section, which is a tower, that goes behind here with uh, flagpoles, and this is where the lone piper will be performing. This is going to be quite interesting because we have to dismantle this, crane it up to the top of our tower and install it. And I'm telling you, I will not be up there. It's too high for me. <laughs> We've jumped on it, kicked it, thrown it around, mass massively ill-treated it, and uh, it stood up to it. So we're pretty confident that it'll be OK for a week or so out in the, in the venue. If you think of Scotland, you think of it. Edinburgh Castle. It's uh, vital to the whole thing. Oh, it's amazing. There's been dozens of men toiling away at it. Good old Aussie's working very hard at it, and it's fantastic. does do in Edinburgh uh, with the atmosphere of the, this castle being built here it's phenomenal I mean obviously it took a long time to do this but it's obviously worth it the crowd with their appreciation makes it worthwhile so it's good marching striding and dancing through the gates of the castle were performers gathered from Australia and around the world and they had only three days to rehearse together remember you're entertaining you're not competing let me see the smiles well 100 and uh... 50 dancers were selected for the uh, Australian Oscott team and they were from all over Australia, from far north Queensland, 
down to Tasmania and across to Western Australia with all the states and regions in between. So it's been a huge task and it's a wonderful experience for these dancers to come together. The hardest part will be getting 160 dancers to dance together on grass. Dancing on grass is difficult for a Highland dancer because um, it's soft and you don't get any rebound from it. The training program for Highland dancers is almost like that of an Olympic athlete. Sit back and be gobsmacked at the dedication it takes from 16-year-old Chantelle Burke. Um, my training program for this year will change. Just because I've turned 16, I'll still keep up my four Highland lessons a week and various other dancing. Also incorporating stretching and Pilates and as well as the gym program. And also swimming if my muscles get too sore. But it's not just the Highland dancers who are constantly training. Stick around. After the break, we'll show you how we got that special camera angle never before used on the tattoo. And you'll see the emotion involved behind the scenes. Push the energy out there. Huge crowd. A lot of expectation. Here it comes, here it comes. Here we go. Oh, Long memories, the Kiwis. If you thought Greg and Trevor Chapel would ever live down the underarm bowling brew, ha ha, think again. Welcome back to our special look behind the scenes of the Edinburgh Military Tattoo, Salute to Australia. This event is a once in a lifetime experience for everyone involved, including the producer of the event, Brigadier Melville Jamison. I thought the appropriate title for this tattoo should be Salute to Australia. Why? Because I feel personally as a Scot and a Brit, I'm deeply uh, proud of our association with Australia. I mean, Australia and Britain have stood together through two world wars and lots more. We greatly appreciate the uh, association that we've had with Australia over the years. I think this is our sort of perhaps a demonstration of our, our thanks um, and uh, our appreciation for that relationship, a small demonstration of that thanks. Two here in Sydney is bigger than any two we've done before. I don't think anybody around the world can say that they could see a bigger pipes, mass pipes and drums. What we've got here is quality and quantity, and I don't think anybody can surpass what people will see this to do in terms of mass pipes and drums. Mass pipes, find us at the quick part. Performing tonight in the massed pipes and drums from Scotland, and we're about to see them form the thistle, the national emblem of Scotland, are the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, Royal Highland Fusiliers, King's Own Scottish Borderers, Highlanders and Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders, the Royal Gurkha Rifles, the Royal Air Force, and Lothian and Borders Police. And from Australia, the Pipes and Drums Band of the Royal Australian Regiment, Australian Army Pipes and Drums, Tasmania Police, the Federation Tattoo from Melbourne, Queensland Police, Scots College of New South Wales and the Royal Caledonian Society of South Australia. All coordinated by Major Stuart Sampson and led by Drum Major Scott McDougall.
content of the cast for the Edinburgh Literature Tour in, in Australia, uh, I wanted it to be as sort of similar as possible to the show we do back at home. We're welcoming some of the finest acts that we've certainly had in Edinburgh. His Majesty's Kingsguard from Norway, rated certainly in Europe as one of the finest to two acts, band and drill team, all raw recruits who've only been training for a month or two. It's incredible what they achieve. His Majesty the King's Guard of Norway. It says so right here in Norwegian. <laughs> For the Norwegian fans, and there are plenty out there, here's some footage of their performance you've never seen before. Some people will be familiar with the Queen's Colour Squadron Royal Air Force. They're part of the Royal Air Force Regiment. Uh, one of the world's great uh, military drill teams, uh, dressed in uh, their blue uniform, their famous RF blue uniforms. And it's some hundreds of movements, and it's one of the finest drill acts I've ever seen. To help you appreciate just how good these guys really are, we set up over 20 different cameras to capture them from every angle. But it was our special camera, situated 40 metres above the ground, that gave us the best view. It's called a trolley cam, and it can travel around 200 metres and reach speeds of 25 kilometres an hour. And it's the only one of its kind in Australia.
uh, very uh, overstretched at the moment operationally. All the pipes and drums that perform at the Enbridge 2 and the ones I'm bringing here are all from regular uh, army regiments, great Highland and Lowland regiments of Scotland, including the Royal Gurkha Regiment. And they have um, uh, pr uh, professional jobs to perform within the military. And at the present time, of course, we've got uh, an awful lot committed to Iraq, as you have. When they get back, a lot of them will be either back on training for operations or going to operations around the world. The military bands, of course, uh, similarly have um, the duties of medical, um, medical orderlies and that sort of thing. And therefore, at any one time, just as your services have, we have bands based uh, abroad as well. What people don't see, and I see, is the emotion behind the scenes. It's a very moving uh, feeling. It's uh, very awesome, actually, to have the, uh, the crowd behind you and you're in your own country and having a tattoo, which is great. It's something that we all look forward to, and I think we're all inspired to that. We'd all love to go to Scotland and play in the tattoo, but to have one in our own country is great. I'm from Norway. This is the first time I'm in Sydney, and it's the first tattoo I ever have been to, and it's awesome. I feel like first time, it's this amazing feeling, and I can't, I can't explain it, it's like... I try to create the, the more emotional moments towards the end, during the evening hymn and the last post, and the, when we remember all those that have gone before us, but also those that are savvy abroad and risking their lives for, um, for us. But when the Lone Piper plays, I think for most people, that's probably about the most moving moment of the show. to everyone is that, of course, we're not doing this for the money. And any money that we make out of this, we're going to split it 50-50 with the Australian forces, and the money will go to service charities of the Army, Navy and Air Force, which will go to help um, those who have lost people in war right through back to the Second World War. The event raised $3.6 million for those service charities. Well worth the march. And I'd like to thank all those who've come and watched us here and uh, all those who come to Edinburgh and see it. I hope they'll keep coming to Scotland and uh, where they'll find a very warm welcome and we'll try and make sure the weather is half as good as yours anyway. We're having a fantastic time. It's great to uh, be integrated with all these absolutely outstanding musicians from around the world. Six minutes. See you at the end. Have fun. Adrenaline goes when you're out there, you know, uh, leading the band. It's basically brilliant to meet you. This is my son, Kieran, who uh, just turned 13 on the 16th of January this year. That makes him the youngest player in the Edinburgh Military Tattoo in Australia this year. My dad said if you see somebody without a smile, then give them one of yours, and that's what we're pushing on to everybody out there.